Let's, uh, you know, after la you know, the, the spring season, you know, what was the, the first day like finally getting out there? Um, it was nice to be back out there. I think everyone was chomping at the bit, you know, uh, after, you know, kind of the sour taste that we were left uh, in our mouth after last season. So I think a lot of guys were anxious. A lot of guys were excited. Um, I know for me, I was super excited to get back out there. I think we have a lot of talent this year. Um, we got some transfers, you know, Jared Scott, Shane Daly. Um, I think those guys will be big contributors to our offense this year. So just to see what those guys can do, I think today uh, for being day one, I think we look very good. Um, obviously, there's some stuff you always want to clean up and improve on, but I thought for um, overall day one takeaway, I was very pleased with our performance. Uh, you mentioned like the sour taste. Like, was it that uh, – were you kind of that mad after, after last season, even though it was kind of this shortened, weird COVID year? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think obviously if we're playing a game, we played a win. So obviously, you know, our record was two and four. And I think a lot of those games, you know, we're Coach Fenn talked about it today. You know, we're winning in the third quarter in all those games. So um, I think obviously everyone knows what we're capable of. I think we have a lot of talent. We can compete with anybody, you know, look at Eastern, you know, competed with those guys. Look at Weaver, you know, top three team in the country, competed with those guys. So we're definitely not scared of a challenge. Um, and I think it just made, made us all a bit more hungry, knowing what we're capable of, knowing that we can compete with these guys. You know, we're kind of – we hit that hump, and now, you know, this season we talk about getting over that hump. So I think um, mm -hmm. obviously we used last season as motivation. You know, we don't necessarily, you know, frame ourselves around last season, but we kind of use it as motivation, you know, to light a, fi a fire under our ass. Yeah. How, uh, how long after last season, like, did you watch those games, rewatch those games? Um, I didn't know. I mean, obviously, I was, on a weekly basis, I'll go in on Sunday and we'll watch, you know, on Saturday's game. But I didn't, you know, feel the need to go back and, you know, kind of rewatch. I, I know what happened. You know, I, I know how I felt after the game. So um, I think but honestly, just looking back, the game that kind of sticks with with me the most is I would say I would say the uh, Eastern game. You know, I think obviously what happened, obviously, Eastern is a very powerful team. And, you know, we had kind of had the lead on them the whole game. We had momentum and and that's kind of a game where, our, our, you know, we kind of went in there and said, let's just, let's just, you know, run and shoot. Let's, you know, they're going to score points. Let's score more points. So I kind of like that attitude. And that's, you know, that's kind of, I think, an attitude we have to have this year. And we talk about in the offensive room, you know, don't put it on the defense. Let's, let's be the guys on offense to go, you know, not quit the defense in that position. Let's, let's score, you know, let's blow a team out by 42 points so we don't have to worry about, you know, the last drive of the game. Yeah. You, uh, you mentioned a lot of the new receivers who are coming in. How much, I don't know, confidence you have in those guys and how much easier is that going to make your job knowing you've got so many playmakers around you? Yeah, I, it's, it's huge. Obviously, you look at last year and uh, the four that, you know, the four freshmen that we had obviously were huge and they stepped up and played key roles on our, our offense um, that I wouldn't expect a true freshman to make coming into college football. So, you know, Xavier Guillory stepped up and made a ton of plays. Jeff Harris, you know, um, Christian Fredericks, and we call him Mr. Reliable because, you know, he, he doesn't drop passes. So, Obviously, it's nice to always have depth, but I think, you know, adding these two additional guys that we have in Jared and Shane kind of gives us a security blanket. And, you know, I played with Jared at Wyoming. So, yeah. you know, I have a lot of, you know, chemistry with him. And, you know, Shane's been here all summer, so we've been throwing all summer. So just getting those two months of work with him have been huge. And I think today, um, yeah, you, you could tell, you know, we never really missed a beat on offense. Obviously, we missed passes. You know, that's I mean, you are going to have incompletions in practice. But I think we, we picked right back up where we left off. What uh, so far, who's kind of impressed you on the defensive side of the ball or anyone standing out uh, early on? Yeah, obviously, you know, I think our defense has a lot of talent. I think everywhere we don't really have a weakness. If you look at, you know, as O'Shea, Kennan, T, you know, uh, uh, Connor Wills, uh, Jaden Dawson, uh, Jacob Jones. I think our, our, our whole defense is loaded. So I, I couldn't personally pick out one person. I'm just excited to see, you know, obviously – we need to make strides on offense. I think the defense needs to make strides as well, but I, I think they're, they're, they're up for the task and I'm excited to watch them. Where do you think you need to develop the most this season? Um, I think for me, just, you know, timing more, be more accurate. Obviously you look at 54% completion percentage, you know, obviously I want to get that up. I would like to be touching, you know, 60, 62%. And the biggest thing turnovers, I mean, look at, I had what, I think nine interceptions last year in six games. That's, for quarterback in six games, it's kind of, you know, like, what are you doing? Keep the, obviously, turnovers. We always talk about turnovers. So just limiting those, being smarter with the football. Yeah. Adrian? Yeah, you kind of mentioned a little bit, you know, you and your receivers and that chemistry. You know, looking back in your time at Wyoming and things like that, 
how did this day one compare to are you already having that spring season to the chemistry? How did that work out for you today? Um, I, like I said, he's kind of just picking right back up where you left off, knowing what guys are capable of knowing, okay, Tanner is obviously the fastest one on the team. So if I throw a ball up early, he's going to go run under and get it. If I put a ball low and away, I know, you know, Freddie, Christian Fredrickson, he's going to go, you know, go down and make a, um, make a catch. I know Jared's six, six, he's going to go up and, and jump over somebody and, you know, moss him, so to speak. So um, I think it's kind of just really not really skipping a beat. You know, if, if you play and if you get done in December, you know, you're off for eight months, six months. Obviously, there's spring ball, but it's only 15 practices. So you're really off for, for eight months, so to speak. So I think now we're off for eight weeks. So it's, you know, we don't, we don't really miss a beat. We pick right back up where we left off. Looking at yourself, I mean, how much more comfortable are you with the offense? I'm a lot more comfortable. I think, obviously, looking back to last season, you know, it was my first season in the offense. I think, you know, me and Coach Ferreira had to sit down after the season. We kind of talked about looking back at game one, Weber State. You know, he wasn't necessarily comfortable with, you know, there was a lot of question marks around our offense. You know, what who, what was our identity? You know, what, what, what am I capable of in this offense? Could our O-line protect me? Could I trust the O-line? Could our guys make plays? Um, but I think as the season went along, I got more comfortable in the offense, you know, and I think that showed. So I think now it's just kind of progressing that that comfortability, knowing that, okay, I can trust, you know, a team's going to pick up or bring six guys. You know, I might the wrong guy, but I know with our offensive linemen, they're going to get it picked up regardless. Um, so it's just being comfortable and trusting, trusting the guys in front of me, knowing that I know mistakes are going to happen. They know I'm going to throw a bad ball every now and then, but I think it's just knowing, okay, next play, you know, brush it off, you know, mistakes happen. But I think a lot of guys trust me. I trust the whole offense. So. Um, just just continuing to build that trust. We got some video from the media team and they shut off your wheels. Is that something you're going to see more this year? <laughs> yeah, you know, I like to run. I think obviously being a, a, a white quarterback, you know, there's a stereotype that, you know, a pocket passer, you know, so being labeled as a pocket passer, that's great. But, I, you know, I, I could run a little bit. I think a lot of teams don't necessarily realize that. And so and that's, that's fine, you know. Call me a pocket passer and, you know, I'll pick up a first down when I need to with my legs. So I'm... I'm <laughs> I like running the ball. I got no problem with it. Yeah, I mean, how does that help with the offense, you know, just moving the ball downfield? It, it keeps defenses on their feet. You know, obviously, if they're going to pressure, it's – they can pressure, but then they don't have an escape, you know, an outlet for me. If they play man coverage, you know, now they have to spy the quarterback instead of bringing that, that extra backer, so to speak. So, um, it keeps defenses a lot more honest, um, and I think it's – it helps us out. You know, if I can – pick up a first down on third and five, like, let's do it. You know, if I can, now it, the defense has a lot of question marks, you know, what are they, are they going to th third and five passing down? Are they going to quarterback run it? Like, so it just, it opens our offense a lot more. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. How are you, man? Not bad. Thank you. Yeah. What, uh, after the, the spring season, like, you know, your first day then versus your first day of this fall camp, uh, how much different is it? Um, I think it's totally different. You know, I just feel more experienced um, compared to that first day. You know, felt like I had a little rust on me still. Um, I'm just I'm just excited to be back out there now again. Excited to be out there with the boys. Uh, I was just out there saying, man, it just feels like we were just out here. And then we really were out there three months ago. So it's fun to be – it's fun to – it's exciting to be, be act, out there again. Yeah. The, the spring season was so weird, so kind of many different variables. How much did you learn? How much do you um, put into that? I um, mean, we learned uh, adversity, you know, just all the things that are thrown at us. We just got to we just got to keep going. We got to keep pushing, you know, COVID, one of them, um, people getting out because of COVID. We just got to keep pushing, you know, and adversity is one of the things that I, I feel like our team has has grown a lot to. Yeah. Did, when you think back of last year, like, did you go back and rewatch any of those games? Of course. I'm always watching film, you know, uh, about especially especially right now, especially when fall camp starts, I'm at least going to put in an hour to two hours a night. Um, yeah. Sometimes that's just minimum. I don't need, I go way up over that. Sometimes I need to go to bed. I, I'd be up till 2 a.m. knowing I got to be up at 6 30. So. Yeah. When you, when you're going back and watching them, you know, are you just frustrated sometimes? Cause you guys are so close in so many of those games. It, it's frustrating, but it, it's also, it's also eye opening. See how close we are. You know, even though we finished two and four, that doesn't show what kind of team we were, you know. I believe we should have won the, the the games that we were close into, you know. In fourth quarter, we were up, we were leading in five of those games, and I believe we should we could have finished those games. And I think we just if we we do what we do in fall camp this year, um, I think we can we can show out this this season and yeah. 
take some of those games back away that we lost last game, the last year, sorry. Yeah, Tyler was mentioned earlier, you know, he's got a pretty um, restocked group of wide receivers. You know, your first day going against some of those, uh, those new guys, what were your impressions and who's really standing out to you on the offensive side? Um, there's a lot of, it's a lot of new receivers, a lot of new faces. Um, some of these guys I got to, you know, I got to walk up to and ask, you know, who they're, what's their name and where they're from. <laughs> I got guys I haven't seen in a while, you know, and it's, it's, it's fun. You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, one of the guys I like that stands out to me, of course, I love going against him was Tanner, you know? Yeah. He won all American or when, when not. And I, I believe he's going to get me better this whole fall camp. So, you know, every time I see him on the line, you know, I want to go against him cause he's not, he's not just, I'm just not gonna make him better, but he's also gonna make me better as well. Yeah. Definitely. What, um, you know, are you still kind of returning kicks this year? And is that going to be something that, that we see you in more? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Be back there. Um, I'm going to try to I'm, I'm gonna get one this year for surely. I know. <laughs> so, yeah. What, uh, what's different about the, the defense this year? Or is it basically the same thing? Just you guys are more comfortable with it. I think we're just more comfortable. Um, I think the first, the first couple of the first season, the spring game, the spring season, I think those six games, we were, we were a lot of young guys out there, you know, just still understanding the coverage, just still understanding um, the speed of the game. I think now that we, we you know, we're more comfortable and we understand the coverage and stuff. And then we're, I don't think we're, we're freshmen anymore. I think we're also, we're veterans out there now. And I think it's going to be exciting to see in uh, fall. Yeah. You know, you got all big sky in that, that fall season. Like where, where did you think you excelled and where did you think like, Hey man, like I, I need to develop here. I need to get better this coming into the, the fall season. I mean, I think I excelled um, with my, uh, my brain, you know, I feel yeah. like a smart guy. Um, I, I watch a lot of film. I watch a lot of film. That's all I do. Just put my head down in the film, the film room, you know, formations, you know, a lot of team can tell you what you're running about based off formation and statistics. So um, my, I, I believe, personally believe my weaknesses are um, just getting on top end, top end transitions, top end breaks, being able to come out my breaks. Um, I feel like that's every DB's, weakness and then I think just uh f finishing a play turning my head around and making uh making some plays I got a couple PI calls in the last last Weber State game where I, I feel like they were they were iffy but <laughs> what you know when you get those accolades and things like that start coming to you do you and your past coaches go like how did you not have more offers like coming out of high school and like do you ever wonder that or, or think about that no, um, not not at all. I just think, you know, I, I personally believe that uh, I, I, I'm at where I'm at. God put me to where I'm, I'm supposed to be at. Um, there's nothing really, there's nothing really to it. I, I, I just show up every day and I do what I can, I possibly can do. You know, it's their loss and I believe it's Idaho State's game. Yeah. What, what was it like? What, what do you think it was in high school? Like, you know, you're, you're at Riverside. There's a lot of other, you know, kids around there, but like, but why, why were schools passing on you? I personally believe it's just because my size and then also really? my position I was playing before. I mean, I was playing safety yeah. instead of corner. Um, I don't know. There's not a lot of five, nine, five, ten safeties <laughs> in the one football now. So I, I feel like my speed and my, my feet were so quick. And then I was really good at playing man coverage. So I was, I'm, I was switched to corner when I, uh, when I transferred to JC. Yeah. I, I feel like I excelled in JC and then I'm here now. Is that because you're you were saying like your feet are so quick, so you're better equipped to be going against receivers where you know fast switch and stuff like that is rewarded? Yeah, you know, um, personally, I believe I like going against slots. I mean, I like that nickel type of package. That's where I fit in. Um, that's that corner slash safety type of position, and um, I like I like getting dirty. I like I like putting my head in, it in the box. I like putting my nose in there. You know, I'm not afraid yeah. of anybody. You know, so sweet Adrian. Yeah, you talk about re-meeting teammates and things like that. We know, obviously know the benefits of having veterans on a team, but what are some of the benefits of having a young team as well? Um, personally, I believe the benefits of having a young team is just being able to know that we have so much, we have so much to learn, you know, so much to get better from. You can't just, you, we haven't reached a, a peak yet. We have so much to learn from, and it's exciting to come outside, come out to practice. You know, I always say you, you can't, you can't, uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, you know, but it was placed up by brick by brick. So we're going to get 1% better every day. And I personally believe that's what we're going to do in this fall camp. We're just going to take every practice one by one and we're just going to get better from it. Hey, you talked about COVID in the spring season and things like that and possibly missing guys, you know, this fall they're canceling games and you're going to get that loss if you have to cancel a game. Is that in the back of your guys' head or are you kind of just whatever you can control? It's, it's whatever we can control. You know, we're still going to show up. We're still going to have our game plan. We're just going to show up every, every day. We're going to take one day at a time, you know, 
And then when we show up on Saturday, if we're not allowed to play, then we're not allowed to play. But if we're, we're going to be played, we're going to be ready. You know, I talked to Tyler about this, about him kind of kind of getting out of the pocket and showing off his wheels. Have you seen that so far in practice? And what do you think? <laughs> I, I, I crack some jokes on the side with Tyler here and there about his speed and stuff. But I, I want to see him. I want to see him do a, a QB run. I would love to see a 60-yard touchdown from him. <laughs> but we go, we're going to see this year. What do, you, you put, what do you put his 40 time at? What do you think it is? I'm sorry, say that one more time. His 40 time, what do you put it at? What do you think it is? Um, I'm going to say no comment on that one. <laughs> um, Are you faster I'm, than for sure? Oh, I, I, I play corner. You know, I got a little <laughs> – I, I ain't the fastest guy on the field, but I got some speed on me. You know, why should fans come out and watch you guys play this year? Uh, I'm sorry? Why should fans come out to Holt Arena and watch you guys play this year? Uh, I'm, I'm excited to finally get full capacity in here, you know? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know how much it was last last spring. It was 60% or something. I mean, I'm trying to get a whole arena packed in here. You know, I want the fans to go crazy. You know, and that momentum is huge, huge for a team, you know, especially when you get turnover, especially when you score a touchdown. It, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it hurts another team when you have that, you know, that surrounding sound, that, that environment around them. Oh, yeah, we are. Just uh, yeah. we're trying to uh, uh, make sure we're safe. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, in the spring, it was it was tough getting things handled with COVID and things like that. Is it kind of like replaying those things all over again this fall already? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, we're, we're a little bit more schooled in it now, so it's easy. But, you know, uh, I leave that up to the trainers. I'd rather talk about our team and not talk about uh, this this thing going around. So let's let's move on. <laughs> yeah, you know, day one in camp, obviously, you're not going to see a lot of great things, but I can see a lot of worse things, too. Where do you guys think you're at right now in your team? Uh, well, I told the team after, you know, we're not we're not at the level we were at the end of last spring when that obviously, you know, happens when you, uh, uh, you know, have, have a have a layoff. You know, when you're when you're in a season and you're in the flow, you know, it's really uh, you can make improvements every day. Then you kind of stop, you know, which which we did, which we have to. And hopefully by the end of, uh, you know, we'll see improvement every day. And by the end of camp, we'll be where we where we need to be. So uh, a lot of work to do today, a lot of rust to knock off and. Uh, you know, a lot of good things, but a lot of things that need to be corrected. You know, I, I, I part of my job as a head coach is to critique uh, our coaches. And I uh, have a lot of notes <laughs> to go over with them in our staff meetings. So, uh, and, and it just takes people time. And, but a lot of good stuff out there, a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, uh, you know, it's nice having basically the whole team back and, and having uh, completed a six game schedule I mean, all the way up through the middle of, of April really helps. You know, we talked about that spring season in the past about how the development of players and coaches and everything has helped. Can you kind of see the difference in day one already compared to previous years, day one at fall camp? Yeah, just from the standpoint that there's a, this team is is uh, have a, has a level of confidence that I haven't seen. You know, once again, I always allude to the fact that we were two and four. Okay, well, we're judged by wins and losses. Um, but uh, there's a level of confidence that we got out of those games, and 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 I don't think there's a uh, you know, I kind of got, are we going to be good? Are we going to be okay? I think, I think this team expects to go out and, and play well. Yeah, you know, obviously you were at Big Sky Media Days and you saw all the rankings, you throw that out the window. It's football now when it comes to a couple of weeks. You know, where do you hope to see this team kind of take that next jump and when do you think it, how fast it'll happen? Uh, you never know how fast it'll happen. You know, we're, we're going to be tested from uh, play one, game one. You know, uh, we're going to have a, a, you know, a top 10 team uh, made it to the second round of the playoffs with one of the best running backs in the country coming in North Dakota. So we don't have time to, uh, we have to be good from the get go. So uh, we expect to uh, be hitting on all cylinders when we, when we play the, uh, uh, what, are, what are they call the fighting Hawks now? <laughs> yeah. How nice is that? Obviously to, you know, not open up a season against a team that's not a FCS level team, you know, you can kind of roll in and see where you're at right away. Is that kind of the benefit of that? Yeah. It, it, you know, we've opened up against division twos and, 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 you know, you can't, you don't get a real good gauge of where you are, but by opening up against a team at the caliber of North Dakota, uh, it's, it's, we're going to, we're going to know where we are right away and, and know where areas we're going to have to fix and, and that sort of thing. But, you know, North Dakota quality program, uh, very, very familiar with the big sky. Uh, they were in it. They wanted a couple of years, uh, coach Swigert. Uh, does a does a great job, you know, and, and it sounds like our Monday press conference, but uh, we're <laughs> for the, before the week of the game. But we are uh, we're knee deep into the into the uh, into the Fighting Hawks as well as our own selves. 
you, know, you talked to Marlise about having a young team at Big Sam Media Days. What are the benefits of having a young team? Obviously, you know the benefits of a veteran team, but what are some good things about these young guys? Uh, well, if we if we play well, the future bodes well. You know, that's uh, but a very young, enthusiastic team. Night, you know, and 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 had a great off season, great summer. Brandon uh, Stevens did a, did an awesome job getting those guys. Uh, our strength coach did an awesome job getting those guys ready to go. With uh, you guys obviously kind of have more experience now in the wide receivers room, you bring in Jared, you get another year, guys like uh, Freddie and, you know, Xavier, what are, what has impressed you about your receivers early on? Uh, they're, they've retained everything. Uh, you know, they've retained their skill set. They've retained their technique. And uh, it, it's just nice having guys that those, those six games were invaluable. That's one, that was a big question mark going in last spring was, you know, we had Tanner Connor and the four freshmen. And, uh, you know, those guys came out and played. It was awesome. And now it's, it's nice having that spring behind them going in. You know, he, Freddie's not a question mark. You know, uh, uh, Jeff Harris, Jalen Henderson's not a question mark. Xavier Guillory's not a question mark. And then throw Shane Daly Jr. and, and, and Jared Scott into the mix. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a fun pool of receivers to have. When, when you have depth and confidence in that many guys, um, is there kind of more of an onus on – you guys as a coaching staff to make sure that they're in at the right times and in the right situations. Yeah. You want to, you want to make sure that you, you put players in the best position possible to be successful. But what that also does is allow you to rotate guys. Cause there's several positions on the field that do a tremendous amount of running the, the, the wide receivers and the, and the, and the corners. And uh, uh, you need fresh legs all the time. And you can't, you can't just play with three, you know, you have to have a, uh, you have to have a core group of guys and, and having six to eight that you can trust and count on uh, kind of helps. Obviously, it doesn't, and it helps in practice because you can save legs. So yeah. you're for games and then it helps you in games. And, you know, you really don't feel uh, uh, worried about putting someone in for someone else. And, and that's what's it's nice to have that. And, you know, with with uh, Tanner Connor leading the way, uh, he's he's done a great job with those guys. But those freshmen are uh are pretty self-motivated hard workers you know you don't need a senior to sit there and drag them along they they want they're hungry and want to go yeah you you mentioned earlier like you know after last season you kind of made some critiques of your coaches and you know things you'd like to see what were what were part of those and you know what do you want to see going forward well, uh, what I was talking about with the, with the critiques, I was actually talking about like practice today. That's oh, gotcha. I, I, yeah. yeah, it's like that's what my job is to critique. I don't I don't get to coach. I stand around at practice and blow a whistle. I got a headache. I got a headache from this stupid thing. So lightheaded, yeah. You know, so 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 my job is to is to watch the program overall, watch the program, and then and then discuss with them. Hey, I think we need you know take a look at this, take a look at that. So uh, gotcha. I thought our I thought our coaching staff going back to the spring did a did a wonderful job. Uh, yeah. the guys engaged, kept us in games, you know, five of the six games we were ahead in the fourth quarter. And that that's a tribute to the coaching staff. Um, I need to do a better job of game management at the end of, at the end of games. That's on the head coach. But uh, our, our staff has done a wonderful job during this offseason, got the guys prepared to go today. And uh, and they've done, they've done a good job. When you go back, when you go back and watch last season and, and how many close calls you guys had, you mentioned the, the game management aspect of it. What did you learn? Um, through that process and you know is there anything that you kind of take with you going into this season well just as 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 we get going you know you don't want to leave timeouts on the field obviously and there's some situations we probably could have called some timeouts we didn't necessarily have to you know and, and we're always uh between uh roger cooper and, and mike ferreter and myself even david fia we are uh, we're constantly you know kind of hey do we want to take one here do we want to take one here and and, you know, between me and Coop talking about some situations, we were both kind of, well, you know, we felt at the time we were OK. But then when you go back and analyze it, you know, you, you, you want to uh, maybe stop and, and put the brakes on everything. And and so that's, you know, that's one thing we that I have to be better at. You know, that's to do with the coaches. That's the head coach right there. Uh, Tyler was mentioning that, you know, he put in a, you know, a lot of work this offseason, wants to get his completion percentage up. Is that a, a case of that this year, hopefully that happens because he's more um, understands the offense better? Or is that just, you know, he has another year under his belt and um, do you think he'll progress and kind of be able to to reach some better completion numbers? Uh, really, it's both. You know, uh, he has he has he, he had a had a really good understanding of the offense, especially as the you know, we got towards uh, 
uh, as the season progressed, the six games. And it would have been really fun to have an 11 game season to see where we would have been. But uh, uh, yeah, he uh, said him being mature, you know, another year, it's nice that we, we got him for two more years. And uh, uh, but he's he's done a good job. He did a great job in the off season with the guys. Uh, did a lot of a lot of film study with Mike Farrader. Uh, You know the, the guys have to do the throwing on their own, and he and he was right in the middle of that. And uh, he's a he's an extremely hard worker, dedicated quarter. He's what you want. He's a he's a gym rat type quarterback, and mm-hmm. he, he's what you want. But with his his knowledge of the offense, you know we we'll always put some tweaks in there. But there's always a base system that you have, and and he's uh, he's very well schooled in it and does a good job of, of what I say, uh, conducting the orchestra. Yeah. Um, you know, I, high school football season's about to get going and you've kind of mentioned it a couple times, you're going to have these guys for a lot longer. Um, you know, getting that extra year back, like how has that impacted recruiting for you? Uh, it, it's, it's a tremendously because, you know, you don't have as many scholarships to give, you know, you're limited by, uh, what the NCAA allows you to have. And, uh, you have to be, you have to be, very smart and, and not have any misses. So yeah, it, it's difficult the way, cause we're not over signing, you know, some schools have chosen to, you know, the NCAA allowed you to sign over your number. We're not going to do that. We're going to stay within our numbers and uh, you just have to be uh, very thorough. And Byron Hout as our recruiting coordinator uh, has, has headed up the whole thing, you know, starting this, uh, this summer and, and done a great job. And I think we're, we're right where we need to be. Sweet. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank, it. Thank, Thank you. you. Really quick, you know, why should fans come out this season and support these Bengals? Because this team plays hard. Uh, This team is exciting. It's a great schedule. Great schedule. I mean, you look at our our, almost everybody we play at home or everybody we play at home is going to be ranked. You know, there's no reason not to come out. Plus, we haven't had games in Holt for for over a year. Our last game was uh, uh, in Holt was uh, against WSU back in 2019. So come fill this place up, make some noise, make life miserable for the bad guys. And, uh, and, you know, come, come see, come see this team. I mean, you saw what type of team it was. Uh, we got a lot of good players and, and, uh, and we play an exciting brand of ball and, and it's going to be a, it's going to be an exciting season. You know, you got uh, North Dakota, like I said, a top 10 team coming in uh, Sacramento state who won the conference a couple of years ago. Uh, and we're going to celebrate the 1981 national championship team. Uh, UC Davis, where, where we all saw how that game was last year, and uh, and then you got uh, WSU, which is always you know they're they're going to be a top two or three team in the nation, and then obviously uh, U of I at the end of the year, which uh, I thought I think the, uh, the the league did a fabulous job by arranging the schedule and making that a a designated rivalry at the end of the year, uh, along the lines with uh, the one up north and and the one in California. So uh, that, that uh, you know, we hope to make that, you know, and I know, I know the coaches up there would say the same thing. Uh, we hope to make that the, the premier rivalry game on rivalry weekend, well, easy for you to say, in the, uh, in the Big Sky Conference. So I said kudos to, to Pauline uh, pushing that and kudos to the Big Sky Conference uh, getting that done. I, we're, that, that's, I, I love it. That's, that's when that game should be played. No other time. Last game of the year. And, and that also guarantees us an indoor game. We don't have weather at the end. Yeah, I mean, how exciting is it for you as a football junkie to finally get going again? And how excited are you that football's back at all levels? Yeah, it, well, I got I got my first fix last night. I watched. Uh, I got home and got five minutes of the Winnipeg Jets and Hamilton Tiger Cats. So I, I love Canadian football. I love the CFL, and uh, uh, I love watching it. And I got home and I just happened to have five. I got the last five minutes. I was like, okay, good. Here we go. <laughs> Because usually they're playing in June, so the season yeah. playing in June, so you get to you know you get your fix of football in June and in July, and then you start camp, you're ready to go. But uh, you know they put their season off, so it was cool. And I think there's another game tonight. I don't know if I'm going to get to it or not. Uh, and then there's two Saturday or something. But I, I love watching the CFL. Yeah, what keeps it going? What's I like wish we could play with those. I wish we could play with those rules on offense. Because they motion, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of keeps you going as a coach, man? Like every year, what makes it so fun to be out there with the guys? Uh, the kids, you know, and just it, it, the thing that's good about college football is there's turnover every four years. You know, they're, they're, you have a new team. Every team's different. This is kind of like, this is interesting. This is kind of like the first time ever in my 30 years of coaching that we have basically the same team coming back. 
You know, I think we have maybe three players uh, from the roster that contributed that are not on the roster this year. And uh, um, it, it, that's the only thing that's interesting, but it's just the challenge. It's, it's going out and coaching and, and really there's nothing like college football. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a great thing. And, and one of the best things, another thing that the league did, and, and I think Pauline uh, made the effort to do is all of our games are at one o'clock. That's college football. Come out, get up, uh, everybody go tailgate and come out for a nice afternoon. You know, even though we're inside it's sunny, it's sunny and 70 in the dome, but, but a lot of our other games are at one o'clock this, uh, this, this fall too. And that, and that's college football. This seven thirty, eight o'clock stuff. When I was at UNLV, we had eight thirty kickoff. That college football. You get home, you get home from New Mexico at four in the morning. I mean, 